here's a few additional tools to keep in mind to engage in self-exploration. That's the, the notion of small experiments that you conduct on yourself. So the same way that scientists conduct experiments to figure out how the objective world functions, you can do experiments to push the envelope in understanding your subjective filters and your own psychology and your assumptions about how you work with other people. Uh, one of the things that I've talked about in uh, this class about what happens in T groups or in the self-reflection paper is the notion of expanding your comfort zone. So we are comfortable in the way we operate. We tend to, it tends to work, right, until we find a situation where it doesn't work anymore. Uh, where we're starting to feel stuck. Maybe we feel like we're in a straight jacket. You know? This happens when you are in uh, jobs you don't like, relationships that have lost their appeal, uh, career paths that seem uh, unappealing, uh, when you start feeling depressed, when you feel uh, a loss of vitality, all of those are examples of when, what happens when you get stuck in a small-minded way of considering your existence, a conserv an overly conservative way of making choices. Right? So uh, the key to having a vital life, to continuing to grow, is to continuously make self-experiments and expand your comfort zone, be a, a little bit of an adventurer in your life. Some of us are naturally inclined to take a lot of risks and be big adventurers, and some of us, you know, less. But uh, it's important to uh, get to the magic zone, right, <laughs> by making small experiments. Uh, we understand this very clearly. Like a, a great way of considering this is uh, you, you're still in that age where you're dating, right? Uh, and, you know, there's, uh, it's always a little, you know, there's always a little bit of anxiety about how do you approach a potential romantic partner, right? Uh, some of us are very shy, some of us are more comfortable, but, uh, you know, you have to sort of like get out, a little bit out of your comfort zone, knowing that the other person is going to be a little bit out of that comfort zone, but potentially, you know, magic can happen, right? <laughs> if both parties, you know, get out of their comfort zone, right? Uh, but it happens in other parts of your life. It happens uh, in professional choices you make. It happens in uh, avocations you pursue. It happens in uh, trips you take. So there's many, many ways in which you can uh, make small experiments. Uh, so a, a key, I wrote two things here. One key notion related to this is the notion of untested assumptions. So most of us walk around with untested assumptions about how the world functions, how other people are. Uh, one potential untested assumption would be, nobody likes me. I'm not lovable. I'm not likable. Uh, some people really feel that, you know. Nobody gave me love when I was growing up. Uh, I, people tend to not seem to notice me. People don't seem to like me, right? Uh, if, you, if you have this assumption and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, then, you know, it will discourage you from making contact with others, from engaging others, and it will perpetuate a state where other people don't engage you because you don't engage them because you expect them not to engage you, not to like you. Right. So how do you get out of that negative spiral? How do you uh, do a small experiment uh, is you test the untested assumption. I have a great story for you on that, it's an actual story of somebody who did that, that I was coaching. So when I was uh, uh, teaching at a HEC School of Management in Paris, one of the uh, activities I did was coaching MBA students. And uh, I had this one student who was uh, a 40-year-old uh, woman from Russia originally, who had a training in engineering, 
She was married, she had a small child, and uh, she was getting her MBA because she wanted to progress in the managerial side of things, away from engineering. And uh, when we had our first few interviews for the coaching, we quickly identified one of her main issues, which was that she had a terrible time saying no. She was kind of a yes kind of person. You know, she liked to, she was a people, a person pleaser, a people pleaser who couldn't say no. Doesn't seem like a huge issue. Many people have that problem. Um, but it was big enough that we, we thought, oh, that's, that's a theme in her life. Let's, let's explore that. Um, when, we, when we started exploring that, we realized, where does it come from? Why, why, you know, why can't you say no? Uh, and deep inside, when we uh, looked at it, we realized, well, she didn't feel lovable when she said no. She felt that people would not love her if she said no to them. And her, she had worked her whole life saying yes uh, with the assumption that I can only be loved when I say yes, when I do things for people. That's when I'm lovable. Uh, so she said yes to her boss. Uh, and that worked fine. She said yes to her husband, whatever he wanted. She said yes to her friends. Uh, and she was starting to reach a point in her life where it was starting to be a little overwhelming. The demands on her were starting to be overwhelming. You know, a mother, a wife, a uh, working professional who's rising up through the ranks. Uh, and, uh, you know, what happens when you don't say no is things pile up on your desk, you know. Your colleagues are like, hey, can you do that for me? Can you cover that? Your boss, can you do that other file? Yeah, you're the good, you're the good worker for sure. Uh, but you know, you start to have a very demanding life, very stressful life. Right? Uh, so the key thing was like, well, is it true that the, the, the assumption that we had that I, I helped her test was, is it true that you're not lovable when you say no? And so, you know, there's huge fears about testing and tested assumptions. Like, no way, you know, I can't, you know, I'm sure, I mean, I'm terrified of saying no. She was terrified of saying no. I don't know what will happen. You know, the world will, you know, some, some kind of like cataclysm will happen if I say no. That's how built up her fears were. Think about your own fears. We all have somewhat irrational fears, you know, and that we're so terrified of that we can't test them. We can't try them. You know. um, so, uh, the key is to make small experiments, start small. So I suggest you try to pick a small stake situation where you're going to say no. Don't start by saying no to your boss on a, on a difficult project, right? You're going to freak out about that. So pick something small, not so important. So uh, think about it and come back and try to say no and, and monitor what happens when you say no to yourself. Like how do you feel what happens? Uh, and so she, she, she was dutiful in her, you know, she, she was game in doing the small experiment. And so she had a friend who had a son the same age as her son. And they would go together for sometimes for walks in the forest. And her friends, they usually would take the car of that woman. And her friend would put her son in the back of the car with muddy shoes after they had walked in the muddy forest. And uh, they, I forget the, you know, I'm forgetting the name of the woman, but she, she didn't like that. But she had never said anything about it because she was, you know, very much afraid of conflict and disagreeing and displeasing others, right? So what she did was she tried to express, like, please, can you take the shoes off, you know, like, um, or clean them, you know? And um, when she came back, she was like, oh, my God, it was a complete disaster. She was so not used to expressing her needs that when she did, it came out a little peaked, a little overly, like, because uh, she was un uncomfortable about it. And so her friend was like surprised furthermore because she, she's the woman who never says no, who never has demands. And her friend was like, okay, you know, just no problem. You know, I'll just, uh. Uh, and so she comes back, she's like, see, I become a monster when I say no. People will hate me. I'm sure my friend will stop loving me, you know. Uh, and, you know, the first thing I did was I reassured her and, you know, told her, you know, good congratulations, thank you, know, good. Tap, give yourself a good uh, tap on the back. You, you tried something, don't expect to be an expert and say no if you've never done it in your life. If you have never snowboarded, you know, in the mountains and you try it for the first time, you're going to fall on your ass and, uh, you know, many times and it's going to hurt and people are going to, you know, you're going to feel self-conscious about it. 
But, you know, you don't abandon after the first bowl. You, know, you do it again and again and again, and then eventually you learn it. So, good job. Trust yourself. You can do it, do it again. Keep doing more small experiments. So, that, you know, that very small experiment grew into a, a, a series of small experiments where she started to be more comfortable saying no. So, first she had to be comfortable saying no. First she had to get over her, her unconscious reaction of, uh, you know, her, her huge fear. So, getting past that and, and learning different ways of saying no, different levels of saying no, you know. No doesn't necessarily mean like, no, I don't want to do this, you know. No can be, eh, I'm not that excited about that idea. That's a kind of like different way. Or it could be, no, I really don't want to do that. Or it could be, I'm really too busy right now. Like, I, I would love to help you, but I can't, you know. Uh, th those are multiple ways of saying no, of establishing boundaries, right? Uh, so she started experimenting with that. Uh, and what she found was her untested assumption was false. She was not unlovable when she said no. It started with her friends. Her friends told her, wow, you have a personality. <laughs> you know, she was always the one who would go along with whatever they wanted, you know. Always agree with everybody. Have, do you have friends who like, like pushovers like that? You know, what movie do you want to see? Oh, yeah, no problem. I want to see what you want to see. Where do you want to go for dinner? What do you want to go for dinner? I, I, I want to go where you want to go, you know? Uh, eventually, she had her own taste, her own thoughts. She was smart. She had uh, good taste. So her friends realized, oh, wow, here's your taste. Here are your thoughts. You are not just a uh, sort of like vapid sort of transparent person. You actually have a very interesting personality. And we like you. We like you that way. We want to see more of you. So that was first reaction. Her friends loved it. Her boss was amazed. Now, you would think, oh, what, what, what would her boss like her say no? Uh, well, he had slated her to be promoted to become a manager of her team for quite a while, but he relented because he was afraid that she was a pushover, that she would not be able to defend the department, say no to her subordinates, uh, you know, fend against other uh, managers, department managers, and uh, when she started saying no and asserting herself, he was like, oh, yeah, she's, she has more, more uh, strength than I realized. And uh, she's, uh, you know, he actually promoted her. So that was an amazing <laughs> change out of this little experiment. Right? The one sort of issue that the husbands was the one who didn't like it uh, at the end of the experiment. He was like, I still he didn't like uh, having a wife who started to have her own demands. Uh, but, you know, so I, you know, I'm not, when I say, you know, I don't know how it ended, hopefully uh, not badly, but, you know, if it ended in a separation, I would be like, that's not necessarily a negative outcome, because do you really want to be with somebody who expects you to always do what they want to do? I mean, personally, I think, like, in a relationship, I think it's not, it, it's not good, it's not healthy for either party. I would be bored to death if I was with somebody who always said yes to everything I want to do. Sure, it's somewhat comfortable, but after a while, I would feel like I'm, you know, living with an absent person. Right? So that's a great example of this. Think about it when you write your self-reflection paper. If you identify some issue that you have, it could be like something like saying no, but it could be something else. You know, where is what are where are your untested assumptions? What kind of small experiments could you see yourself taking? to see whether the assumption is correct or not. You know, we, we might have things like, oh, I could not possibly uh, climb a mountain. I could not possibly uh, really pursue a particular career, you know, because it's like very hard to make it. I could not possibly, it's not possible that this person would like me, you know. Uh, well, you know, it, it takes some guts to take little experiments. It takes some willingness to make mistakes, to fall on your ass a little bit. It takes some uh, laughing at yourself when you fall. Uh, but there's a huge amount of success and magic <laughs> right there. Magic, truly. Like I can tell you, in my own personal journey, uh, I, I, I would say I'm a pretty happy guy. I'm, I'm a very happy guy. I'm very happy with my life. Uh, I have 
you know, if I died to m today, I would feel like fulfilled. I would feel I have not missed much, you know, in the last 20 years of my life. It didn't start out that way. I don't think I had a happy childhood or happy teenage years, you know. So it didn't start like, uh, I was not lucky like that. But people who have meet me sometimes tell me, oh, JF, but you're lucky. You, know? you have un unconventional, unusual luck. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm flattered to hear that way. That, you know, I don't know. I don't know what you think about luck. There might be some truth to some degree of luck. But mainly, I think it has to do with that. You know? At some point, I realize I can go in the magic zone. And the more I go, the more it expands, and the more it becomes real, and the more you make your life your own. Your own you know? So you know, testing the untested assumption, realizing that uh, your life can be so much more yours than you realize that other people are so much more ready to be fabulous to you as friends, as partners, uh, that there's so many magical things that can happen with other people when you go in the magic zone. So I really encourage you to explore that. Now, I, I want to also talk a little bit about counter de facto thought experiments. That's even pushing the limit further. So we have very commonsensical beliefs that direct how we see the world. Like, I expect that uh, if I don't come to work, I'm going to not be paid, right? So I would be like, yeah, of course, common sense, you know. Counter de facto thought experiment would be, what if it was not true? What if the opposite was true, right? So, you know, like, it's, it's kind of like related to a tested assumption. Right? So, uh, only when I say yes can I be loved and appreciated. So the counter de facto assumption would be only when I say no and assert myself do people like me, right? Uh, so it's a thought experiment that invites you to change, to consider that reality would be in a way that you could not possibly imagine it being. You're like, no, that is not possible. You don't even want to consider it. You're like, that's not, no. But you're trying to be open-minded enough to say, well, wait a second, what if, what if? Now, it can lead to ludicrous things. Like, what if I, gravity stopped working and I started flying, you know? Uh, that, you know, that, that sounds like an obvious, like, but, you know, it takes the willingness to take those kind of thought, interesting thought experiments to, to stumble upon some untested assumptions and some aspects of reality that could work. So uh, it's, it's a practice of not second guessing yourself, more like musing, being, uh, being willing to entertain versions of reality that are very different than the one you is solidified in your mind. Does that make sense or, or not? I see like somewhat blank, not non response, a counter de facto assumption, right? Uh, willingness to consider when you have a strong belief, uh, what if the opposite was true? Right. Uh, give it a try. Give it a try. I, I would say as a thought experiment uh, for you know today, you know, the rest of the day, pick something, a belief that you have. Try to notice something and say, what if the opposite was true? And try to act as if it was true. Now within the realms of safety, right? Don't jump off a window and say, let's see if like, gravity works. Uh, but I mean, you know, like, again, in the playful way of small experiments, you might discover a bunch of stuff that you know, the world can become extremely interesting all of a sudden. You might realize that it's a, it's a way to expand your worldview, counter the factor assumptions. 